Haskell in coding interviews. Is it even allowed? What's up guys? My name is Artyom and today let's talk about coding interviews and Haskell. Should you use it? Should you not? Is it madness? Let's find out. I've recently run quite a few coding interviews. And what I saw is that the choice of the language can actually make it or break it. Um, just to clarify, here I'm talking about Fang style of coding interviews. And um, in these interviews, coding uh, problems usually have um, a very specific structure. They can be very different, but usually involve some sort of optimization which requires mutation of the um, underlying data, okay? In terms of, um, let's say, data structures, you may need to do some uh, pointer fiddling, or if we're talking about dynamic programming problems, uh, they usually need some sort of memoization table, um, which gets filled as you go, okay? So, uh, and in this sense, some languages um, are on the sort of safe side of the spectrum. Uh, these languages do not impose um, any restrictions on what you can or cannot do in the language. And uh, the, the obvious examples are Java and Python and uh, even a camel, okay? And in this sense, Haskell is on the other side of the spectrum uh, because it imposes very significant restrictions, namely the functions should be pure, uh, hence, no mutation, no side effects. But what if you're a Haskell enthusiast, but also like to live dangerously? Can Haskell be a practical language choice for solving interview problems? Let's find out. We'll consider this problem from HackerRank called Minimum Swaps 2. Uh, in this problem, we are given a uh, an array of consecutive integers without any duplicates, but the elements are in some random order. We can swap any two elements, and we need to find the minimum number of swaps required to sort the array in ascending order. Um, so this is a pretty typical example of an interview problem. Um, it has some nice recursive structure, but it also requires an optimization to solve efficiently. Now let's switch to the whiteboard and uh, draft out the solution that we are going to implement later. Um, okay, so what we have is again an array of integers, okay? First, let's start with the, with the recursive structure of the problem. Uh, let's assume that everything until index uh, i is already sorted. All right, so all elements are in the correct position, so we don't need to do anything with these, uh, with these elements. Now we are um, at index i, and if we already have i at ith index, then the index is, uh, the element is in the correct position. Again, we don't need to do anything, we can just move on and work with the remaining part of the array. Now, if what we have is not i, but rather some j here, what we need to do is we need to find i somewhere here. Let's say it's here. Then we need to swap these elements. So uh, kind of i goes here. Uh, and uh, J goes here. We need to increment the number of swaps. And then we proceed with the remaining part of the array. So this is basically our recursive structure. Um, then there is one operation here. And basically this is a lookup of um, the, the position of a particular element. So Basically, we want to know where element i is located, and we want to do it quickly. Since all the elements here are integers from 1 to n, we can just 
uh, use another array to track the positions. Okay, so basically we can take the initial array, then as we iterate it, we fill in the positions. And as we do the swaps, we update the positions as well. So here's the idea. Now let's jump into the editor and try to implement this in Haskell. All right, so let's start with a quick setup for the project. We have run Cabal init, and now we can clean up the uh, generated Cabal file. Mm -hmm. Okay. We also have um, main.hs file, which again has a stub for the main function. It just prints hello world. We will also generate uh, a high file for the Haskell ID uh, LSP server. And let's now try to run the program. Okay, now is a good time to grab uh, stop source code from hacker rank. So uh, this is basically some um, plumbing to make the solution work for hacker rank system. We can see that there are a couple issues related to missing packages, uh, like split, array, and this one is from containers. So let's add those to our uh, Kabyle build de dependencies. Here we actually don't need to specify any version information and let Kabyle resolve the version for us. Now we can run the build again. Uh, right, looks good. And also let's restart LSP. We can see a stop for the solution here. And um, before we proceed, let's just replace it with something like zero and um, try to see whether everything works fine. So uh, we need to specify output path, environment variable, and then run it. So now uh, we just need to supply some arguments. Okay, it looks like everything works. If we go back, uh, let's just remove the unused dependencies and uh, language options. And also let's generate Google database so that we can search for documentation uh, really easily. Now we can start Google server and uh, it's on localhost 8080 and let's search for int map. This is a data structure that we're going to use to store our uh, elements and their positions. So here we can see mm, how to create the map, uh, empty map and map from list. So uh, I guess at this point we can go back and start drafting out the solution. First, we need to uh, import int map uh, in a qualified way. So, okay. All right. It's also a good idea to just supply the type signature. And now we can start with implementing the function. So we have the input list. And now the first step would be to kind of index this list. What we will do is just zip the, the indices starting at one with the input. So this will give us a list of pairs, the index and the element. Ne then we need uh, to create a map from this uh, list of indexed elements. And this is pretty easy. And um, since we have elements, we also need to have element positions, which is gonna be another map. Uh, but uh, let's for now stop this uh, function. Let's call it build element positions. And it will uh, take its input indexed input. Okay. And a uh, final ingredient will be a recursive function called go, which will uh, sort of encapsulate the 
iteration over elements and calculation of minimum number of swaps. So it will take the num swaps, it's the current number of swaps needed, the current index, then elements and their positions. And the result will be just calling go with some um, initial values for num swaps, index, elements and their positions. All right, so now let's actually first define build element positions function. And for now we can just make it return an empty int map. Okay, so far so good. Now we need to implement the actual logic for building the um, element positions map. So we take index to input and as it's always with lists, our implementation is just a left fold the accumulator will be the map build so far. And what we need to do, we need to insert in this map, uh, actually we need two arguments here. And uh, let's check. So yeah, so accumulator first and then the current element, which is gonna be a pair of indices and the current element in the map. And we insert for each element its index in the resulting map. And uh, here it looks like we're missing something. Okay, and actually we're missing the indexed input as uh, an argument to fold left function. Now should be good. We build again. All right. Now that we have all the necessary pieces in place, we can start refining the um, recursive function go. First, we will need the maximum index, which we can extract using size function from int map. And then we will do a case by case analysis. So let's say if our current index is equal to max index, we don't need to do anything, right? We just returning the number of swaps found so far. Now, if um, the element, the current element, and here we need a function to extract the element at idx. So let's check the documentation for this one. So under lookup, we can see that uh, there's actually an operator, an exclamation mark. So let's import this operator here. and go back to the function. So what we have is if the element at index idx is equal to idx, it means it's in the correct position. So what we do is we are basically uh, just going to the next step, uh, having the same number of swaps. Otherwise, we need to uh, kind of extract the current element at position idx. Then we need to find out uh, the position of the desired element, which is equal to idx. And this is something that we're gonna extract from element positions map. Okay. And now we need to update the elements map and element positions map. We cannot update it in place, but we will uh, use insert function to create uh, updated maps for elements and element positions. First, we'll update the position. So for the current element, the position will be desired L position since we're swapping them. So this is what we need to um, do here. Let's bind the result to a variable and do the same with positions map. So here, we're gonna have updated elements map and it will be the same as the previous one, but with the current element at desired tail position. Now we need to recurse. First, we need to increment the number of swaps. Then we need to increment the, 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 the index and also supply updated maps. Mm, so it looks like the type checker is not happy. Let's see what's wrong. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so it looks, looks like we haven't applied fully some function somewhere here. And uh, yeah, it seems that in the uh, second branch. Yes, so here we need to provide the index, which is going to be idx plus one. Now we build and let's actually fire up REPL and just try a couple of cases. Okay, this looks good. This one also looks good. And after this solid round of testing, uh, it's time to go back to hacker rank and submit this code for testing there. So let's run on uh, some examples. Looks good. Now submit for real tests. Great success and a sign that we are on the right track. All right, that was not too bad. We correctly solved the problem, but also managed to do it in a purely functional way. So let's call it a day and end the video, right? Well, not exactly. See, here we use maps instead of arrays, and therefore our lookups and inserts were not constant in time anymore, but rather logarithmic. Okay, and uh, also this solution is just less performant than the uh, original tier array solution, something that you could easily implement in Java or Python. So the question is, can we use some more advanced Haskell to uh, implement this tier array solution and get some nice performance benefits, uh, but also um, just uh, make reasoning about time and space complexity easier. So let's check this out. It is always good to start with documentation. So we will need docs for M array, which stands for mutable array. Mm -hmm. Then we will need docs for ST, which is a monad that we are gonna use to sort of encapsulate our mutation. And then we will need ST array which is um, kind of an implementation of a mutable array that uses ASTMonad to run the mutation under the hood. Okay, so yeah, so that looks like a better link. It's also worth checking out just uh, immutable arrays. Uh, this looks like the wrong link. Yep, this looks like the right one. We can see here that array is parameterized by a type that needs to implement ix type class. This is probably a little bit too abstract for our cause, but basically it allows you to uh, use not just ints for indices, but also chars, booleans, whatever, but ints as well, which uh, works for us. Then we have the, the bounds for array, and then we need the list uh, with uh, indexes and values. Now the mutable array interface uh, is actually a little bit different. So M array is actually a type class, which is sort of an interface for uh, mutable arrays. And there are many types of mutable arrays, for instance, ST array. And here we have the same sort of interface for creating uh, mutable arrays within the target monad, which will be ST in our case. Now ST itself stands for state transformer. And this is a monad that allows us to run side effect and computations in a purely functional way. Finally, we're gonna use ST arrays as an implementation of M array interface. So let's go back and uh, kind of create scaffolding for the ST based solution. First, we need to define uh, a new function. And um, this function needs to take input as an argument. And it's always a good idea to supply type signature. So we take a list of ints and we need to return an int, which is the number of swaps required. 
we will need a number of imports and we will start with uh, importing run st function which will be applied at the top level so that we can escape from st monad into the pure non-monadic world and now uh, we will just start sketching out the, the solution. First, we will need the length of the input so that we can um, kind of define the mutable array. So we recall that the function is called new list array. And the first thing is actually, um, it needs the bounds for the array. So let's define bounds from one to input len. And then we provide bounds and the input list for the array. But for some reason, this does not type checks. We can see that Haskell is not able to infer the type variable here. Since M array is a type class or an interface, and there are several valid um, instances for this type class that work in this context, Haskell just cannot choose for us. So what we're gonna do instead, we will define uh, less generic functions to create our array. So here we sort of kind of feel this type parameters with ints and st and st array. Okay, so this kind of looks good. And now we will, as an implementation, use the original new list array function. And let's also import st array here. All right, and when we replace the original function with the new one, we can see that the issue is gone and the code now compiles. Now we need to create element positions, which is gonna be uh, first a non-initialized array so that we don't need to provide any elements to it. And here again, we are going to uh, create this more specific version of the function. So here we don't need the list of elements. And for some reason, it looks like it doesn't work. Okay, so yeah, we need another function called new array. Good, so now this uh, compiles and then we can proceed to kind of filling this element positions array. And for this, we need to iterate over indices. So we cannot do four but we can do for M, which is sort of a monadic iteration over the least monad. But anyhow, we can use this syntax to iterate over our indices. And here for each element, we need to save its position in uh, element positions array. So we're gonna write array. First element is array itself, then index, and then the element. So the index is gonna be the current element we're looking at. So we need to read it first. Current element, we're gonna use read array function at idx from elements. Now we um, finish write array invocation. And this is pretty much what we need here. We have element positions array, which is filled with positions of elements. Now to the um, main part, which is another iteration over elements, where we're gonna do the comparison and swaps when needed. But before we start iteration, we need some mutable counter to keep track of the number of swaps uh, we've made so far. Since we are uh, working inside ASTI monad, we need some form of a mutable counter that also works inside ASTI monad. So with IO we have IO wraps, but with ST we should have something called ST ref. So let's check out docs for ST ref. Okay, so yeah, we have new ST ref, modify ST ref, read ST ref. Um, the interface is pretty clear so far. So let's create a new ST ref and initialize it with zero. Now to our iteration, we're gonna use again for M from one to input len. And uh, 
here, we're gonna implement the same logic. We gonna read the current element from the elements array. Then we need to compare element with the current index. When the element is not equal to index, we need to do a swap. So we're gonna use when function for this. It takes a condition as a first argument and the second argument is the action that is going to be uh, executed when the condition holds. So the action will be the following. We again need to find the position for the IDX element and we're going to read it from the uh, element positions array. All right. And then we need to update our, our positions. So now for element is gonna go into desired L position place and similar thing for elements array where we update uh, index desired L position with the current element. And now finally we need to modify STREF. Uh, so let's import it and um, let's see, let's see. So we need to increment the number of swaps and it looks like the first argument is the SDRF itself. So we have number of swaps, number of swaps. And finally we need to import when. And as a final step, we replace return zero with read strf num swaps. This will give us the number of swaps that we need. Now let's build and fire up the REPL. Okay. Let's see, four, three, two, one. Looks good. Let's try another case. Okay. It looks sensible. And the final one should be two. Yep. So far so good. Now we need to uh, update our main function to use minimum swaps ST instead of minimum swaps. And we can uh, actually submit this to HackerRank. Let's go back to the HackerRank web page. Uh, and insert our code here. Mm -hmm. Let's do a smoke test. Good. Now submitting for real testing. And again, great success. Let's take one more look at the function that we've implemented. Uh, so here we have uh, something that looks actually very close to the original idea. We have uh, regular for loops, we have in place updates, and it is very straightforward. Okay, one thing that we have here is the necessity to use this extra uh, specialized functions. And the thing is, if we replace it back with new list array and new array, we will see that uh, a compilation issue where Haskell says that it cannot uh, sort of infer the type variable here. So if we expand this, we see that there are two instances that potentially work. One is ST array and another is STU array, which stands for unboxed. And since two of them works, we just needed to provide one. And this is why we needed to use these specialized signatures. Funny enough, the solution that uses mutable arrays and uh, SD monad actually looks very close to something you would implement in an imperative language. So basically what we have here sort of ticks all the boxes. We have a way to write a solution that is straightforward, that is aesthetically pleasing and also has great performance. Well, that is if you actually manage to figure out how to use mutable arrays and SD and memorize the APIs and all this stuff. Um, anyhow, to sum it up, should you use Haskell in coding interviews? Obviously, if you're a Haskell expert, you can do whatever you want. That's a no-brainer. Now, 
if you're a Haskell enthusiast or maybe use Haskell at your day job, one of the few, uh, then you probably still want to practice solving uh, interview problems specifically in Haskell. During the interview, you will need all your mental bandwidth to solve the problem and you just cannot allow this accidental complexity to uh, sort of um, take part of this uh, mental bandwidth. And uh, finally, if uh, you're sort of interested in Haskell, but more interested in just passing this coding interview, maybe something like Java, um, Scala, Kotlin, uh, Python, or even C, um, is a more practical choice of language. All right, so I guess here it is. Almost forgot. I made some vague claims about performance, but as we all know it, guessing is not really part of uh, the performance story. So what we're gonna do next time is we're gonna write benchmarks for both map-based and ST-based solutions and see what the actual numbers look like. But also, we're gonna do the same thing in Rust and compare. Now, this is really it. See you next time.